Ooh, look, I'm driving a new Ford F-150. We'll do a detailed Kelly Blue Book review of the new F-150 soon, but for now, I'm gonna see how this thing drives in a variety of trucky settings, mostly using Ford-provided footage that may or may not look like where I'm actually driving. A good place to start is just normal day-to-day -day driving. For those who didn't see my excellent F-150 first look video, here's a quick reminder. The 2021 Ford F-150 is all new, even if stylistically it doesn't look it. A 10-speed automatic transmission is now standard across the lineup, and there are six engines. What, you want me to read them all out? All right, we've got a 3.3 liter V6, a 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6, a five liter naturally aspirated V8, a 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6, a 3 liter V6 diesel, and a new 3.5 liter PowerBoost V6 hybrid. And we've run out of room for graphics. Well, this is a fun way to kick things off. Let's drive the new PowerBoost F-150 hybrid. One of the first things to jump out to me is just how quiet the cabin is. Uh, it's a really blustery day and you just can't hear the wind noise. In fact, two F-18 fighter jets flew over where we're driving and you could just barely hear them. That impression of quiet is amplified, I guess sort of the exact opposite of that, when you're standing still because the engine isn't running because yes, this is a hybrid. Speaking of hybrids, one of the things I always look for is brake feel because blending regenerative brakes with friction brakes is a very tricky thing to do. I'm gonna do that right now and that does not feel good. Mm, that is an unnatural feeling brake pedal. You can get used to a pedal like that, but it doesn't feel normal. On a more positive note, the hybrid system feels really good going between that pure electric takeoff and when the engine comes to life. In fact, I couldn't feel that at all. I saw it in the gauge cluster, but that's the only cue. And now for funsies, let's see what happens when I floor it. Oh, pretty prompt downshift, and you get that immediate uh, electric boost. Two last notes, besides this super thick B-pillar, visibility is great in all directions and ride quality is- five miles turn right. Don't you ever interrupt me, Sink. Ride quality is really nice. This is riding on 18 inch wheels. You can get 20s and 22s, but dare I say velvety over the road feeling? Yeah, velvety. In short, the revised Ford F-150 does an admirable job as daily transportation, but what about all those other things people do with trucks? Let's talk off-road. I'm driving a King Ranch with the FX4 package and the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Let's get rugged. All right, driving on this simple dirt trail doesn't feel any worse than driving on roads in Michigan. Okay, we got a tree and some rocks, and I'm in rock crawl mode. I do like the gauge cluster, how it switches to a very off-road type of presentation. That smooth riding nature on road makes this a much more comfortable ride off-road over this uh, really rocky stuff. I, it looks bouncy, but this is pretty refined for the uh, kind of terrain I'm going over. Yeah. Okay, the biggest challenge on this off-road path is avoiding all the cow crap, uh, except for that little bit of uh, rock crawly stuff back there. But yeah, for just normal, straightforward off-roading, this seems to be going just fine. This real chattery stuff, the F-150 seems to handle great. Also, I can verify that the King Ranch F-150 is a fine tool for driving around an actual ranch, which is where I'm driving. Last note, I like the promptness of the 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine. When you get into the accelerator, there's really no delay on the uh, power. Yeah. Jeez, it looks like I'm driving through the opening of Little House on the Prairie. Of course, there are other more off-road focused variants to come, Raptor, but for simple dirt duty, the F-150 is a comfortable, competent player. Box checked. And now, to round things out, how does the F-150 tow? I'm sitting in an XLT trim, it's a 4x2 with the 3.5 liter EcoBoost and I've got 8,000 pounds of boat out back. Let's tow. As mentioned, I'm lugging 8,000 pounds worth of boat, but the F-150 can haul up to 14,000 pounds with the 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine. We're gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome to cut to B-roll that has nothing to do with what I'm towing right now. Yeah, that's the stuff. 
I guess test number one, let's get it moving from the stop. Floored. Yeah, so with 8,000 pounds getting to moving, the limiting factor is traction, not power. <laughs> Ooh, an even better test. Merging with freeway traffic on Highway 5. There are a lot of semis here. Very, very busy road. Let's do this thing. Floored. And merging pretty successfully in front of that box truck. All right. And there's 60. So I wanted to get ahead. <laughs> there was a truck merging and then another truck needed to get over. So putting in that power, I was able to get out of that uh, semi's way pretty easily. Yeah, so this section right here is particularly steep and there's just no problem keeping up speed. With 8,000 pounds in back, you can definitely feel the weight, but the F-150 manages it quite well. As a dude who tows very infrequently too, I also like the fact that there's some technology that uh, helps account for my ineptitude, uh, not the least of which being blind spot monitor that helps account for the length of the trailer. Because the last thing I want to do is mess up Ford's pretty boat back there. Oh, this is good. So I have to move over a lane. And let's see when that blind spot alerts. Let's me know. There we go. I'm clear. Cool. By the way, Tomo did a really nice thing there as I got in the brakes, did a little downshift, a little bit of engine braking. That worked well. This boat is well below the F-150's maximum capacity, but it feels like something that people would actually want to tow with a pickup truck, and it's doing a really good job. Even with me at the wheel. Wow! Last thing I'll add is that the dynamic cruise control and lane centering system also works when you're towing a trailer. So if you've got like a long drive to Havasu, this takes some of the effort out of that equation. Okay, now that I've had the system active for a little bit, I do find that the steering wheel tends to pull back and forth, maybe a little bit more frequently than I would prefer. Maybe I will turn that off. Ah, you know, driving the 2021 Ford F-150 was a lovely time, but man, there is so much stuff we haven't discussed yet. Like bed functionality, zone lighting, lane centering and other active driver assists, the optional folding drive selector and flip out center console work area, these fold flat seats, and a bunch of other stuff. That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> Maybe I'll let my KBB compadre Lynn Woodward handle the full review. So yes, there's plenty left to discuss, but at least where driving behavior is concerned, the latest F-150 is off to a promising start. 